This is the Music History Today podcast for July 3rd. On today's show, two artists pass away under controversial circumstances. A couple of artists make their debuts. Ziggy plays guitar for the last time. And a movie renews interest in a rock and roll pioneer. First up, though, on this date in 1895, Scott Joplin copyrighted his song, A Picture of Her Face. In 1958, the Andy Williams TV show debuted on ABC television. In 1969, James Brown and George Benson were among those who performed at the Newport Jazz Festival. In 1970, the Atlanta International Pop Festival started. Grand Funk Railroad and Jimi Hendrix were among the performers. Also in 1970, American Top 40 syndication radio countdown show premiered with Casey Kasem. He would host it for 34 years. In 1973, at a concert in London, England, David Bowie retired the Ziggy Stardust persona. In 1975, Chuck Negron of Three Dog Night was arrested for cocaine possession in his hotel room during the first night of the band's tour. In 1976, Brian Wilson played with the Beach Boys for the first time in 12 years. In 1982, police broke up a riot at the Stopera Concert Hall in Amsterdam. In 1985, the movie Back to the Future premiered. What's the music connection, you say? Well, the movie renewed interest in Chuck Berry, specifically the song Johnny Be Good. Also, we learned that Marty McFly actually was the one who invented rock and roll. Yeah, anyway. In 1990, Slick Rick was arrested for attempted murder and other crimes related to trying to kill his cousin who had threatened his family. Slick Rick was later given a pardon. In 1995, the group TLC filed for bankruptcy protection and Jewel performed on television for the first time. In 1996, Cliff Richard sang during a rain delay at the Wimbledon Tennis Tournament. Lane Staley played with Alice in Chains for the final time. And Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum's movie Independence Day premiered. In 1998, the group Westlife was formed. In 2002, Will Smith's movie Men in Black 2 premiered. In 2004, Glenn Danzig got into a fight with a member of the band Northside Kings backstage during their concert. Glenn had the Northside Kings kicked off of the tour, so a member of the Kings punched him in the face. Fair trade. In 2009, singer Chep Mami was sentenced to prison for kidnapping his ex-girlfriend and trying to force her to get an abortion. Class act. In 2011, Little Richard performed on stage for the first time since he had surgery that didn't go too well a couple of years later. In fact, it left him in a wheelchair. In 2020, Ryan Adams apologized online for his abusive behavior towards women a year and a half after several women, including his then ex-wife Mandy Moore, publicly accused him of the behavior. Ryan blamed his behavior on alcohol abuse, but said that he had gone to rehab and had gotten better. In 2020, same day, the filmed performance of the Broadway musical Hamilton premiered on Disney Plus's streaming service due to COVID lockdowns instead of in movie theaters. And in 2021, Blake Shelton married Gwen Stefani. In theater, in 1954, the musical Wonderful Town closed on Broadway. Albums that were released on July 3rd include in 1969 when Fairport Convention released Unhalf Bricking. In 1970, Scylla Black released Sweet Inspiration. In 1975, Ronnie Wood released Now Look. In 1980, The Jacksons released Triumph. In 1984, Lindsey Buckingham released Go Insane. In 1990, the Allman Brothers Band released Seven Turns. In 1991, the compilation album Am I Cool or What premiered. In 1996, Cryptopsy released None So Vile. And Cool and the Gang released State of Affairs. In 2000, the compilation album G.A.Y. premiered along with Black Males Do Robots Dream of Electric Sheep. That's actually a great title. Love that title. 
In 2001, The Alcoholics released Exo Experience. In 2014, Richard Marks released Beautiful Goodbye. And in 2016, Maren Morris released her debut album, Hero. Singles that were released on July 3rd include in 1969 when Chicago released Questions 67 and 68 and Rod Stewart released Forever Young. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on July 3rd include composer George M. Cohen, jazz clarinetist Pete Fountain, singer-songwriter Fontella Bass, she sang the song Rescue Me, Judith Durham of The Seekers, Shane Lynch of Boyzone, Kevin Hearn of Bare Naked Ladies, country music singer Aaron Tippin, Vince Clark of Eurasure, and also Depeche Mode, and also The Assembly. Stephen Piercy of Rat, Broadway singer and actress Betty Buckley, Mike Corby of The Babies, David Lynch of The Platters, singer Laura Branigan, composer Leos Janasek, rapper Brooklyn Queen, singer Party Next Door, Singer Ellie King, Maddie Mullins of Memphis May Fire, country music singer Mike Ryan, singer Boutrint Emery, singer-songwriter Mick Hanley, rapper Butterfly Butler of Diggable Planets, and session guitarist Tommy Tedesco. Artists who unfortunately passed away on July 3rd include composer Johann Wendt, who passed away in 1801 at the age of 56. Composer Joseph Quensnell passed away in 1809 at the age of 62. Composer Stefano Golanelli passed away in 1891 at the age of 72. Organist Daniel Zamudio passed away in 1952 at the age of 64. Composer Henriette Bosmans passed away in 1952 from cancer at the age of 56. Composer Richard Mohout passed away in 1957 at the age of 52. Composer Alfred Ackley passed away in 1960 at the age of 73. Music critic and composer Deems Taylor passed away in 1966 at the age of 80. Composer Andre Gailhard passed away in 1966 at the age of 81. Guitarist Brian Jones of the Rolling Stones drowned in his pool in 1969 at the age of 27. That death had an awful lot of controversy with it as some people feel that some people killed him, namely Mick and Keith or the British Secret Service. Go figure. Composer Hermann Grabner passed away in 1969 at the age of 83. Jim Morrison of The Doors passed away from an accidental heroin overdose in 1971 at the age of 27. That death also had a lot of conspiracy theories going around with it. We discuss this particular death and also Brian Jones's death, both at the age of 27, thus joining the infamous 27 Club, on the Music History In-Depth podcast, which dropped yesterday, actually, since you're hearing this more than likely on July 3rd. It dropped on July 2nd on this channel. Please like and subscribe, as they always say. In the meantime, blues singer Mississippi Fred McDowell passed away from cancer in 1972 at the age of 68. The conductor of the Czech Philharmonic from 1950 to 1968 and the Toronto Symphony from 1968 to 1973. Composer and also a survivor of the Auschwitz concentration camp, Carol Ann Searle passed away in 1973 at the age of 65. Composer Hugh Lecrane passed away in 1977 at the age of 63. Composer Louis Dury passed away in 1979 at the age of 91. 
Saxophonist James Buster Bennett passed away in 1980 at the age of 66. Singer Rudy Valley passed away in 1986 at the age of 84. Bassist Brad Sexton of Little Charlie and the Nightcats passed away in 1995 at the age of 47. Jazz pianist and actor Pim Jacobs passed away in 1996 at the age of 61. Composer George Lloyd passed away in 1998 at the age of 85. Singer-songwriter Mark Sandman of the group Morphine and also the group Treat Her Right passed away in 1999 from heart issues at the age of 46. The composer of the Doctor Who theme song, Delia Derbyshire, passed away from renal failure in 2001 at the age of 64. Country music songwriter Johnny Russell passed away from complications from diabetes in 2001 at the age of 61. Opera singer and violinist Lorraine Lieberson passed away from cancer in 2006 at the age of 52. Saxophonist Boots Randolph passed away in 2007 at the age of 80. Singer and harmonica player Colin Cooper of the group The Climax Blues Band passed away from cancer in 2008 at the age of 69. Fiddler Oliver Schroer passed away from leukemia in 2008 at the age of 52. Entertainer extraordinaire Mr. Andy Griffith passed away in 2012 at the age of 86. Jazz trombonist Bill Waitrus passed away in 2018 at the age of 79. Singer-songwriter Richard Swift of the Black Keys passed away from complications from hepatitis in 2018 at the age of 41. And jazz trumpet and saxophone player Duncan Lamont passed away in 2019 at the age of 87. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is July 4th, Independence Day, when in 1828 we hailed a chief for the first time, and in 1986, Run DMC and Aerosmith released their version of Aerosmith's song, Walk This Way. <laughs> 